A fabulous day, grade 4 student. Welcome to our scientific class with Miss Shara. Let's have our work plan for today. We'll start with science bits, recall, discussion, and thumb bit. Now let's look at our science bits a bit about science so if you always wish for some space experience but always thought it to be super expensive then the time has come when you leave your dream right so this is the world's fair first space hotel it looks super dreamy unusual and futuristic all at the same time so the orbiting space station like design of the space hotel looks super amazing and it can accommodate 400 guests the hotel will also feature restaurants bars and a cinema hall and there might be a space for educational seminars so one of the prime pictures of the space hotel will be artificial gravity which will allow guests to walk normal sounds interesting right the design of 190 meter diameter wheel shaped hotel that looks quite stunning and strong the plan is to make this wheel rotate and create a gravitational force same as that on the moon oh is it that amazing we are going to have a hotel in the space and it's all because of artificial gravity and gravitational force. So those are the effects of force. That is one example. So now let's look at our learning targets for today. First, I can state and explain the effects of a force on an object. Second, I can give examples of the effects of forces in my daily life, just like that in the bits of science for our science bits that is one effect of force in our daily lives now let's find out more about the effects of a force on an object now let's look at our discussion questions what are the effects of force to an object what are the examples of effects of forces in our environment? So these are the questions that you need to take note of the answers. Now let's have a recall. So forces, forces is a push or a pull acting upon an object as a result of its interaction with another object. In 1687, Isaac Newton attempted to explain the movements of everything in the universe, from a pea rolling on a plate to the position of the planets. It's staggering to think about how much of our daily life involves some aspect of Newton's law of motion. So when a push or a pull is applied to an object, it changes its position or changes its shape. So what are the examples of a push? To apply pressure against for the purpose of moving. So if you will look at the picture, we have here a lot of examples. Kicking ball, pushing up, hitting ball, slapping, riding bicycle, punching and pushing cars. Now here are the examples of a pull. A pull is to apply force to so as to cause or tend to cause motion towards the source of the force. Like pulling grass, fishing, pulling a plug, playing kite, dragging or pulling a dog. So the greater the force, greater the change in the distance covered by the object. Some objects return to their original shape after the release of force and some don't. So let's talk more about the effect of a push and a pull or force. Effects of force. So this is our lesson covered for today. Effects of force. On a daily basis, 
we walk, we run, we play, we sit or stand. In all of these activities, we are changing the state of motion. We are bringing some object to rest or bringing it in motion. What is this called? What are we actually doing? We're actually applying force while bringing the objects to rest or in motion. But what are the effects of force? at this example. A goalkeeper places the soccer ball on the ground, then he moves a few steps back before running towards it and giving it a hard kick. The soccer ball moves by flying through the air. The force from the kick made the ball to move. So a soccer player who sees the soccer ball rolling towards him can use his foot to stop it. A goalkeeper jumps to catch the the soccer ball to prevent it from entering the net. These actions made the ball to stop. So force can make an object move or stop. Another effect of force is it can change the direction of moving object. Muscular force can be used to change the direction of a football. So, passing a football during a game of soccer changes the direction of motion. The force is provided by the muscular force. When a baseball is hit, the, is hit, the muscular force in our hand is exerted on the ball through the bat. So, that is one example also. Another is the direction of a moving car can be changed by applied force on the steering wheel which is connected to the wheel of the car. In a game of tennis or squash, the change in direction is the key. The direction of the ball depends on the angle it gets hit. It requires much concentration and practice to precisely change the direction. So force can change the direction of moving objects. Let's find out what, in what direction does the object will go? Okay, so this one is net force. A net force is the sum of all forces acting on an object. So net force is measured in newtons. N. A net force is capable of accelerating a mass. The net force can accelerate a mass some other force acts on a body either at rest or in motion. So force can be uh, described as balance, balance force. So balance force are equal in size and opposite in direction. When forces are balanced, there is no change in motion. So there is no movement. You push or pull on an object from opposite direction but with the same force. So it's steady. You observe that the object did not move. Okay, so that is what you call balance force. Balance forces do not change the motion of an object. If an object is in motion, it will keep moving in the same direction and at the same speed if the forces acting on it are balance or constant. So look at the example. Force of air resistance and friction acting against the skater push to the left side and then the force going to, to the right is 100 newton. So it is balance. Right? Look at the one sitting on the chair. It's the same amount of Force, so there is no movement. Force pushing the truck. Force pushing the truck at the other side. So we have here uh, one finger pointing to the left and one finger pointing to the right. So the force is balanced. The truck stays still. So that is what you call a balance force. Next one is we also have unbalanced force. Practically, anything that moves is a result of the exertion of unbalanced force. If you kick a football and it moves from one place to another, it means that unbalanced forces are acting 
upon it. Ball moves from one place to another after kicking it. So you will look at the example. We have here forces. Forces 1, forces 2. So the first force is 50 newtons. F2, or second force, is 30 newtons. So where do you think the direction will go? It will go to your, to the left. So it is unbalanced force. How about the bird? The air friction is 16 newtons, and the weight of the bird is 25 newtons, right? So where do you think the direction of the force will go? It's going down so look at this box with wheels so we have three newtons then four newtons four newtons eight newtons where do you think will it go the direction will go to the right how about the spaceship okay you have your 300 newtons up and 100 newtons down so the weight is 100 newtons where do you think the uh, spaceship or space shuttle will go, of course, to the highest force going up. So there is movement if there is unbalanced force. Let's have a summary. Um, if it is a balanced force, that means force one and force two is equal. So there is no movement. The object is staying still if there is unbalanced forces it can lead to change in direction so to have unbalanced forces means that the force applied in one direction is greater than the force applied in the opposite direction so look at the second example we have 400 newton to 300 newton so most probably all will go or the the string or the tug of war will go to the left, going towards 400 newton. When unbalanced forces are acting on an object, there is a change in speed or direction. When one force is greater than another, the forces are not balanced. Of course, so it change in speed or both or a change in direction. For the third one, which way will it go to the right? The, we have here 200 newton to the left and 500 newton to the right. In which direction do you think the force will go? Correct, to the right. Now I have here a question. Imagine what we can accomplish when we work together. So look at these two donkeys. They are going to the opposite direction. Both of them can't move, maybe because they are exerting uh, same effort or same forces. Look at what's happening to the second. No, they're trying very hard. Then they cannot do anything. So what happened? Uh, they, each of them agreed right i am assuming that each of them agreed that they will work together right so first they eat the grasses at the left side and then they eat at the right side so they imagine if we will not work as they to think that these are donkeys how about us students or people or human having a common goal is vital without it a team members are nothing more than a group of people. So you need to communicate. They put a question mark. They talk with each other. They face each other positively to embrace their differences and channel conflict to inspire creativity and change. So they change their plans. Sometimes in effective things, teams do the opposite, right? If they have a different Plan. So they want to eat the grasses on their own. So what will happen? Nothing. So lack of clarity can bring about confusion. It makes it difficult for both of them. The effect can trigger what? Confusion. Okay. There is no uh, accomplishment. But what will happen if you communicate 
And you agree to work together. Success will follow. So, communicating positively to embrace differences and channel conflict to inspire output and changes and creativity. And what will happen? You will achieve more. You will eat more. Okay? You will have more. So, work together towards a common goal. So, the force of you when you put them together into achieving one goal is greater than one. So, two is better than one. So, let's try to work together in learning more about science by participating, by respecting each other, okay? By showing your face in a video cam so that I can call you, by uh, keep your mic muted when someone is talking so that we can understand and learn our lesson properly. It's like working together towards a common goal of uh, learning more about science. Okay, so force, another effect of force, it can increase or decrease the speed of moving objects. Just like what we have talked about the unbalanced force. It depends upon the application or the amount of force applied in an object. So, it can, it can increase or decrease the speed of moving object. Just like in this example, disc brakes work on friction between the disc and the brake pad. They can change the speed of motion. According to Newton's law of motion, an object moving in uniform motion should not come to stop, right? But that is not the case. We see that all objects come to stop. This is due to the external force called friction. So if there is a friction, an object will stop. The force slows down the speed of the object and eventually making it to stop. So, friction can make an object move slower or the speed decrease. Brakes applied on a vehicle work on the same principle of friction. So, the friction between the brake pads and the wheel reduces the speed of the wheels. Alright, so let's let look at this example. A force can cause a moving object to move faster or slower while, while pedaling. Oh, look at this uh, guy pedaling a bicycle. So at first, they're speeding up and then there's a constant speed, right? And then it slows down. So it can increase, it can maintain the speed or it can decrease. It can slow down. Another example is the kicking of the soccer ball to make it move. A footballer can choose to kick it with more force to make it move faster or to kick it with less force so that its speed is reduced. A push or pull can change the speed of a moving bicycle, just like this one. If the force is applied in the direction of motion of the object, its speed increases. If the force is applied in the direction opposite to the direction of motion, the force of friction opposes the motion of an object, causing moving objects to lose energy and slow down. So have you tried riding a bicycle and then you, you pedal it forward to make to increase the speed and then if you want to slow down you pedal it backward right to decrease the speed so when objects move through a fluid such as air or water the fluid exerts a frictional force on the moving object so an object speed decreases so when there is an opposing force uh, the speed will decrease, right? So, force can either 
make an object move slower or faster depending on the amount of force applied. The next effect is force can change the shape of objects. Look at the car. It changes its shape because the force of the dropping the, the stone or the rock on top of it makes it deform. So the weight of the body which is force has deformed the car. That is the rock. So when a force acts on an object, the object may change shape by bending, stretching, or compressing, or a combination of all three shapes. So it changes shape. However, to change the shape of a stationary object, there must be more than one force acting on it. Let's see some example. So let's talk about three ways on how an object change its shape by force. You can bend an object's ends past each other. So for example, when an Olympic diver stands on the end of a diving board, so this is the diving board. When the diving board bend down, then it will push upward, so the diver will move down to the water. Right, so look at the, the look at the ruler, it bends. Okay, so this one, you pull an object's ends apart. Example, when a rubber band is stretched, so bending, stretching. So there is a resistance in the band. So a change in shape is called deformation. Elastic deformation is reversed when the force is Remove so it will go back. Inelastic deformation is not fully reversed. When the force is removed, there is a permanent change in shape. So the rubber band is an example of uh, elastic deformation. It undergoes elastic deformation when it is stretched when a force is applied, and when it it returns to its original shape. So when the force is removed, what will happen? It will go back to its original uh, shape. A metal drink can undergoes inelastic deformation when it is squashed, just like the car. Look at this example. So you push an object's end together, right? When an empty drink can is squash right the the object is deformed right just like the tomato and then the car so this can also change the shape of an object too much force is applied it deforms the objects these are example of elastic force right stretching creates tension force which is a falling force applied by an object when it is stretched so stretch bow stretch rubber slingshot stretch rubber band and stretch spring so this is what you call elastic deformation they will go back to its original shape now this one, we have here elastic spring pores also, okay? So we have clothespin, stapler, elastic band, trampoline, compressed ball, spring bed, pin. So these are the example of changing shape of an object when force is applied is what are the positive effects of force positive effects of force in an object is when you are lifting heavy objects heavy equipments and cranes are used for lifting heavy objects in some cases magnetic force are used for lifting heavy objects energy generation forces of wind 
water, flow, and nuclear power are used for generating electricity in power plants. Stop moving objects. So it can stop moving objects. So like friction, gravitational force, action reaction forces, and even muscular forces are used to daily to stop moving objects. These forces work together to hold the entire planet in order. Otherwise, things would be flying everywhere. Transportation can also be a positive effect. So all forms of transportation require some driving force to move. In ancient time, the muscular forces of animals were used. The force of the wind was used to move sailboats. Also in our daily activities, any pull or push we do daily requires force. For example, lifting a cell phone or typing required force. Let me show you pictures of different positive effects of force. So cranes are machines based on a pulley system which are used to lift heavy object. Gravitational force, the movement of the earth around the sun and the falling down of apples, so falling fruits from trees due to earth's gravitational force. The frictional force is everywhere. When two bodies are in contact, it is difficult to imagine life without friction. Friction always opposes the motion, so it acts in a direction opposite to motion. And we are able to walk because of friction. Okay, this one, the magnetic force. So an electromagnetic wave is used for propagation in TB cell phones, radar, and satellite communication. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI is an imaging technique used to image human anatomy. Magnetic particles are used as contrast agents. Fridge magnets stick to the fridge due to the magnetic force. These are the most common example of magnetic force. About this tension force, it has a very positive effect. Okay? It helps us pull or pick an object. So fruits hang on a tree due to the tension provided by the branch. Rescue operation by helicopter involves strong cables for people to hold on to. So water is drawn from wells using the tension of the ropes. There's always two effects. So if there is positive effects, there is also negative effects. So what are the negative effects of force? So continuous use of force can wear and tear. So it can damage, it can make the machine old. So continuous force wear and Tear. Most of the contact force like friction, tension, air resistance can cause wear and tear with prolonged use. Next is unwanted fire. So forces, if not handled properly, may lead to unwanted fire. Accidents like explosion in power plants or forest fires due to frictions. We also have widespread Distractions like forest in nature or due to cyclone, so the forces in nature, earthquake or volcanic explosion can cause widespread destruction. So let us answer what are the effects of forces to an object? So what are the examples of effect of forces in our environment? We have five or six effects of forces. Forces can make a stationary object move. 
Forces can stop a moving object. Forces can change the shape of an object. Forces can change the direction of a moving object. Forces can speed up a moving object. And forces can slow down a moving object. Right, thank you very much. Once again, you are the best. Another scientific class with Miss Shara about the effects of forces. Bye, everyone.